Facebook family, hello, Ryan Lestrange here coming to you from outside of Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, welcome if you're watching the live. I am excited you're here. If you're catching the replay, I'm glad that you're here. I want to share something with you that I believe is a, a timely message. In fact, let me say this. I believe this is a critical message for people in the body of Christ in this hour, people in the kingdom of God uh, in this hour. This is something that we need to know. We need to understand. We need to get it in our spirit that endurance is key. The ox does not quit. I'm going to be talking for a few minutes about the apostolic anointing because we know Ephesians 2.20 said the church the ecclesia, the army of God, is founded upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. And so we know that we've got to be apostolically driven and prophetically fueled and revealed. So one of the attributes we need is endurance. We cannot quit. When God tells us to do something, there may be adversity, there may be trial, there may be tribulation, there may be bumps in the road, but God wants to infuse us with stamina, the ability to endure. So I'm going to be sharing on this. Let me know where you're joining me from. I am excited. Hey, want to mention to you a couple of things. We've got a uh, free a free online uh, webinar happening this Thursday, 11 a.m. Eastern. You can get a replay. Uh, Dr. Tonta L. Walters and I will be teaching on the digital church. This is to help ministry leaders, church leaders, people who are building churches, pioneering churches, feel called to take their message digital. This is going to be free. I'll be sharing uh, information. Hello, Carla and Bristol. Let me know where you're joining me from. Uh, I'll be sharing sign-up information on that. Uh, I'll put the link out on Facebook. Also, this morning at 10 a.m. Eastern, so it's almost 8.30 Eastern here, I'm going to be uh, doing an IG Instagram show, Coffee and Profits. I'm going to be talking, interviewing Apostle Teresa Hawkins over on Instagram at 10 a.m. this morning. You don't want to miss it. Pittsburgh, I see you. Trinidad, hello, my son. Uh, Prophet Nate in Philadelphia, hello, Apostle Marcus. Good to see you. Mary in Virginia, uh, Stacy Land in Virginia. Also, the Grown Midweek, our final midweek Bible study for this month is coming up next Thursday. Next Thursday, Carol Poom, I love you. Michael Sean, good to see you. Next Thursday at 8 p.m. and I'll be teaching on the third uh, frustration of the hungry. I'll make an announcement and remind everybody, but that's coming up just around the corner. You don't want to miss it. Please, if you would share this broadcast, invite your friends, uh, invite everybody you know on Facebook. I want to share with you. I think this is a very important message. It's a timely message. It's something for right now. In Belgium, I see you. Mumbai, India, Philippines. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. So invite them. Uh, I want to just get right into this. I'm going to try not to be too lengthy this one, but I really felt stirred to share. I'm going to share some things from this little ebook. If you never got this one, a lot of people ask me about the apostolic. This is an ebook I have on the apostolic, the ox anointing, uh, apostles who plow. You can find this over at lestrangeglobal.shop, lestrangeglobal.shop. Father, I just thank you in the name of Jesus. I thank you for everybody that is tuning in, uh, everybody that's joining this broadcast. I thank you, Lord God, in the authority of the name of Jesus that you have called them to endure. I thank you, Lord, that you said he who has begun a good work in us is faithful to to complete it until the day of Christ Jesus. And I come against right now every temptation to give up, every temptation to quit, every temptation to just say, you know, this is not working. This is not for me. I pray for every leader this morning. Those that are leading in any capacity, those that are building in any capacity, maybe they're leading in the church, maybe they're leading in the marketplace, uh, maybe they're leading prophetically. Lord, you know what area they're leading in, but I come against right now the spirit of heaviness. You said put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. I thank you, Lord, that in this time, in this period, we're going to praise our way out. We're going to be radical, tenacious in our praise, Lord, and we're not going to quit. We're not going to give up. I pray for fresh prophetic words, God, fresh prophetic utterances that you give your people utterances from the throne, Lord, that you speak to them in Jesus' name, that you bring prophetic uh, words, prophetic dreams, prophetic revelations, prophetic insight, prophetic visions. Father, I pray for an increase of prophetic visions to become uh, the normal in their life, that prophetic visions would become the new normal. I thank you for it, Lord God, and we stir, we activate prophetic sight and sound today. We stir up the anointing to build. We stir up the anointing to contend. We stir up the anointing 
wanting to plow in the name of Jesus. And I thank you for a spirit of endurance, Lord, that your people will not get weary. For I hear the Lord say, even many of you have endeavored to do the work I've called you to. You've endeavored to do that thing I put before you, but weariness is trying to overtake you. But I, the Lord your God, am refreshing you, says the Lord. I'm bringing unto you fresh ideas. I'm bringing unto you fresh words. I'm bringing unto you fresh encounters, saith the Lord. Be strengthened in my presence, for my anointing destroys every yoke, and I'm releasing fresh anointing. This is a time, saith the Lord, in an hour that those who press in, those who move uh, in, in swim in deeper waters are going to receive fresh anointing, saith the Lord. So, Father, I claim a fresh anointing bursting forth, breaking forth, flowing forth. I thank you for the power of the flow, that in the flow you release the no, you give us instruction. I thank you that in the flow you release the go, you send us with dunamis, dynamite power in the name of Jesus. I thank you that in the flow, God, you give us strength, supernatural strength. I speak, I prophesy, I decree strength. I bind up weariness. I bind up in the name of Jesus, every spirit of a weakness that trying to come upon people's minds. I come against that questioning, that wavering mind. And God, I say, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. I release and command the mind of Christ to come alive inside of your people in the authority of Jesus' name. And I thank you for a spirit of strength, a spirit of might, a spirit of stamina to be upon your people in Jesus' mighty name. We decree it right now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So I want to share on this. You can't give up. You can't quit. Now, when we talk about the apostolic, we're talking about two things, the fivefold ministry gift of the apostle, but we're also talking about what I call apostolic people, because I believe God never sends an apostle to do a work that God doesn't infuse them. If you study the whole Antioch church, you study the whole advancement of the gospel in the book of Acts, they were going forth with apostolic teams, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. I teach that when an apostle builds a work, a church, a hub, a ministry center, God will begin to send an apostolic company, a group of people who are solidified in the vision, in the mandate. But apostolic people, those who received an impartation, God did not give apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers to do the work. God gave apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers to impart to the saints so the saints could do the work. And God is raising up activated saints. God is raising up motivated saints. God is raising up accelerated saints. God is raising up saints who have the power of God. God is raising up saints who've had an impartation. God is raising up saints who've heard the vision, who've seen the vision, who've heard the mandate. God is raising up saints who have had the call of God made real to them. God is raising up saints who have received an impartation. One of the things that the fivefold ministry does is the fivefold ministry releases an impartation. But this is the problem. If you're sitting under a leader that doesn't have any impartation, you're sitting under a leader who doesn't have an anointing to release over your life because the Bible said the anointing destroys the yoke. If you're sitting under a leader who just tells nice stories and gives a prepackaged sermon, but there's no anointing, it's not going to get the job done. Now, I want to look at something in the book of Nehemiah. I want to look at something in the book of Nehemiah. This is very important. Nehemiah is in many ways a type and a shadow of the apostolic. We know in the Old Testament there was not apostles. They didn't have uh, apostles in the Old Testament because that didn't come until the New Testament in the church age. But Nehemiah, uh, I believe, is very much, uh, he, he very much had a, a type and shadow of an apostolic calling. And in Nehemiah chapter 4, Verse 4, it says, Hear, O God, for we are despised, and turn their reproach upon their own head, and give them uh, for a prey in the land of captivity, and cover not their iniquity. This is the cry of Nehemiah. Cover not their iniquity, and let not their sin be blotted out but from before thee. For thou provoke thee to anger before the builders. So we, verse 6, we built the wall. We built the wall, and all the wall was joined together unto the half thereof for the people. 
not the leadership, but the people had a mind to work. You see, this is the thing. The people must be apostolic. God calls apostles as foundational gifts to the church, prophets as foundational gifts to the church to begin to speak and declare the mandate of heaven. But the people have to have a mind to work. The apostolic church is not just a gathering place that we come in and we sing some rah-rah songs and say, bless me, uh, anoint me, heal me, and let me go forth and just live comfortable. And I believe one of the things that is happening in this specific time of crisis of adversity, of strange and unusual things happening is God is clarifying the church. There is a shaking going on in the church and we've got to have a spirit of endurance. We've got to have a spirit of stamina. There are territories, there are regions, there are places in which God sent an apostolic leader, but the people did not have a mind to work. They had a mind to be blessed. This is not an apostolic mind. Well, I just want to come and hear the word and be blessed. Don't challenge me. Don't require anything of me. Don't, don't ask me to do anything. Don't rebuke me. Don't correct me. That is not an apostolic mindset. The people had a mind to work. God has not put you as a believer on planet earth to just sit here and suck up oxygen and die. God has put you as a believer on planet earth to be a part of his army in the earth, his building force in the earth. You you say, well, Ryan, what are we building? We are building, advancing the kingdom of God. We are releasing the kingdom of God. Our mandate, and I wrote this in the book, The Oxen, or in the ebook, is on earth as it is in heaven. We are to create a kingdom canopy that where we are assembled as people of the kingdom, where we are praying, where we are preaching, where we are prophesying that there would be a hoopah, a canopy of the glory of God, that in, in the canopied area, there would be signs and wonders and miracles in the canopied area, the joy of the Lord would strengthen people. In the canopied area, faith would arise. In the canopied area, the anointing and the glory of God would go forth. We are to be a people that releases the kingdom. Peter walked down the streets and the sick were healed. And the lame walked and the devils came out. Why? Because he was so uh, solidified in the revelation of the kingdom of God that he was what I call a kingdom carrier. God has called us to be a kingdom carrier. Now, let's look at some more scriptures here. Uh, I, I want to draw your attention to this. And for those of you who say, well, where do you get the concept of the oxen or in the apostolic? Uh, it's many places in the Bible, but one of the main New Testament scriptures is 1 Corinthians 9. And Paul is writing there. And so I want you to note that you go study it. 1 Corinthians 9, going to get that book. You'll enjoy it. Many of you have asked me, I want to understand the apostolic. I want to know more about the Oxen Oin is a good ebook. It's at LestrangeGlobal.shop. I'm about to read some from it today. Let me go there. The Ox has stamina. Because you see, in the early days of this nation, the United States of America, they used oxes to carve roads. Oxes would carve roads. The oxen oil is not afraid to carve a new road. In 1 Corinthians 12, 28, it said, God has appointed in the church first apostles. The Hebrew word, uh, the Greek word first is proton. First in time, first in order, first in rank. The, the, the anointing on the apostolic is a forerunner anointing. And I prophesy to you in the name of Jesus that apostolic pioneers are arising even now in the time of famine. And they're going to carve new roads. I prophesy in the name of Jesus. Jesus, that new technologies are coming in the realm of the spirit, that we are going to have new wineskins, new battle plans, new strategies, that God is going to unfold it in this hour because the forerunner anointing has come upon the apostles and according to Luke 1 17, the prophets. So God sends forth the pioneers. They move out ahead. This is why hell opposes the apostolic because uh, the apostolic anointing is anointed to go to a territory and break it open. To go into a thing and break it open. An apostolic anointing can come on you in marketplace. And you go into the marketplace and you carve a new road. And people say, I never thought of that. I would never do that. I prophesy and declare that this is the time and this is the season of the entrepreneur. That those that are not bound in this season by the spirit of fear will build their businesses, even enlarge their businesses. That God will unfold heavenly economy to them in the name of Jesus. And I bind and come against the spirit of fear, fearful words, fearful decrees, and fearful thinking in the name of Jesus. I break its power and I release, oh God, kingdom economy. In Jesus' 
name. Amen. So apostles find new ways. If you tell an apostle, an apostolic group, you can't do it this way, they will find a way to do it. That's what they do. They find new ways. They are marked with an exploratory anointing to begin to move forth, to begin to move ahead, to begin to move out. But they have stamina. The apostolic anointing is an anointing that has strength and stamina. That when you are receiving impartation, I'm not just talking about apostles. I'm talking about evangelists that are apostolic. I'm talking about marketplace ministers that are apostolic. The word apostle means a sent one. God wants you to know you've been sent into 2020 with answers and solutions. Well, just come forth overnight. You're not just going to all of a sudden spring up overnight, but God is going to take you through a season of preparation. The apostolic demands preparation, apostolic churches. Apostolic companies, apostolic leaders, apostolic groups, apostolic people are going to go through seasons and times of preparation. Preparation is challenging. Uh, preparation uh, can, can cause you to be frustrated. Preparation can feel almost like your vision's being denied, your dream's being denied. You've got to have endurance to go through the preparation, but God never builds high without going down deep. Let me say that again. God never builds up high without going down deep. You've got to go down deep. And so the Lord will go down deep in your life, deep in your mind, deep in your situation. He will go down deep uh, to build that foundation. I don't know what's happening with the technology. I even came off my Wi-Fi so that I wouldn't have a problem. All I know is the devil is fighting this broadcast, but the devil is a liar. Amen. So God sends apostolic people on challenging assignments. Now, let's look at Acts 20, Acts 20, verse 18 to 24. Paul is writing, uh, or actually meeting with his leaders. He's at the end of his journey and he's delivering a farewell message to the elders and the leaders in his apostolic ministry. And it said, when they had come unto him, he said, you yourselves know from the first day I said in Asia until now how I was with you the whole time. Yes, please share this broadcast. Serving the Lord with all humility, with tears, with trials, which came upon me through the plot of the Jews. So notice Paul didn't say, I just had a great time and laughed and uh, everything was great. Paul said there was trials. Paul said there, there was challenge. Why? Because anytime you're building, especially in the gospel, the enemy is going to fight you because he's intimidated by what you're raising up and establishing if it's a kingdom work. And so he said uh, th there was challenges. But he said this, he said, we, um, let me go back and see. He said, you know, uh, how from the first day in Asia, I was with you serving the Lord with humility, tears, trials came upon me through the plot of the Jews. I did not shrink back from you, declaring to you anything that was profitable and teaching you from house to house, solemnly testifying to both Jews and Greeks, repentance toward God and faith in the Lord Jesus. Now behold, bound by the spirit, I am on my way to Jerusalem. Not knowing what will happen to me there, except the Holy Ghost testifies to me in every city that bonds and afflictions await me. But I do not count, consider my, my life of any account dear to myself so that I may finish my course. I want you to notice that, that I may finish my course and the ministry that I received of the Lord Jesus Christ to solemnly testify of the gospel of the grace of God. So as Paul is coming to the end of his journey, giving his final message to his leaders, he was retracing the steps he had taken. He was sharing the, what, what he had went through. And he boldly declared that he had reached a place in his journey that he was no longer moved by storms. That it didn't matter to him what had come against him, what trials, what tests, what tribulations. He knew what God said. That's right, Carol Puma. Somebody needs to Declare on this broadcast in the comments, I will finish my course. Paul said, I'm a finisher. The apostolic anointing has a finishing grace upon it. That when God calls you to do the thing, he is going to uh, establish you in the revelation of identity that you can finish this journey. This is what I call apostolic endurance. We need a good dose of strength. We need a good dose of stamina that whatever God has initiated in our lives, that we will not give 
give up. And it's very important in this season, the Bible said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. We're in a time of pressure. We're in a time of adversity. We're in a time where hell is, is literally uh, uh, doing things, manifesting all around us. And everything in our society is unsure. We've got to go deep and say, I know what God said. I know the dreams I had. I know the vision I had. I know the prophetic words I've had. This current situation is not what God promised me. So I'm going to stand upon the word of God. My present circumstance, my surroundings may not look like my promise, but I believe the word of God that he who has begun a good work in me shall complete it. We need to prophesy and declare we are finishers. In 1 Corinthians 15, 58, Paul said this. This is an ox scripture here. He said, therefore, brethren, be steadfast, be immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your toil is not in vain. I came to tell somebody this morning that your toil, whatever you've been believing God for, whatever fights you've been fighting, whatever family members you've been standing for, whatever ministerial assignment that you've been praying and sowing and believing and getting prayer requests for, but it's been opposed. Whatever thing you began to move in that God told you and it's been opposed. I came to tell you today in the name of Jesus, your labor, your prayers, your work, your effort is not in vain. That what God has initiated, He is going to impart unto you the power to complete. But you've got to stand upon the Word of God. You cannot give up. You cannot quit in this season. In 1 Corinthians 2.12, Paul said this, the signs of a true apostle were performed amongst you. He's talking about him to the Corinthian church. He said, the signs of a true apostle, you've seen my apostolic labor is what he's saying. They were performed among you with all perseverance by signs and wonders. Interesting, three things he says there. Perseverance, signs, wonders. As charismatic Pentecostal people, we typically focus on the signs and wonders part and throw out the perseverance. And I've seen so many Pentecostals and charismatics through the years that the Holy Ghost constantly changes his mind. The Holy Ghost tells them to go here and start this and then when time gets tough, boom, they're out. The Holy Ghost tells them they're a prophet and then when they get attacked and bloggers are writing about them and people are attacking them and critics are coming, uh, now, uh, you know, I just want to be an intercessor. That is a, that's a double-minded man. And the Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. He's not going to receive anything of the Lord. Paul said the signs of apostleship were threefold that he had committed amongst the Corinthian church. And this goes back to the concept of being sent. When you know you're sent, you're sent to your community, you're sent to your assignment, you're sent to your church, you're sent to whatever God called you to do. There is an ability to endure and withstand. And he said patience is one of the signs. That was one of the apostolic manifestations on his life. That Paul had the unique ability as a strategist and a builder to see the potential over the pain. To see the end from the beginning. To see the promise beyond the process of getting there. He could see that he could forecast and look ahead. The apostolic is a sending gift. And it sees the potential. It understands the relevant and present truth that everything in the kingdom of God begins as a seed. As a seed. Nothing in the kingdom ever begins as a big thing. It begins as a little thing. And what prophetic people do, they water it with their tongue because you're going to eat from the fruit of your lips. So if God called me to be prophetic and I'm moving prophetically, but people are criticizing and attacking, I've got to learn to dig deep down in here in my spirit man, and grab everything God said and bring it up when I feel like quitting and bring it up when I feel like getting angry with everyone and bring it up when I feel like uh, yelling and screaming at everyone. I've got to stir myself up. That's what I've got to do. In this verse, Paul had apostolic patience. Think what you think is going to grow in you. And it's very important that you choose to think on the promise of God and the word of God. I'm sorry, y'all. It's freezing again. The devil is a liar. He does not want this word to go forth. So patient, it means not hasty. We can't be hasty in the prophetic. Well, I'm just going to do this and do that and do this and do this, this. Timing is everything and process is everything. Sometimes we can see where God's taking us, but we're not ready at the appointed moment to go where God's taking us. And good leaders and good counselors will help us to determine our readiness. Don't despise a no. The right no in your life could save you from a multitude of calamities. 
The right no. You need a leader that's unafraid to tell you no. It means steadfast despite opposition, difficulty, or adversity. I call this the apostolic mindset. Now, let's look at Paul's words to Timothy. And again, guys, if you want to know more about the apostolic, go and get this ebook, The Ox Anointing. You can find it at thestrangeglobal.shop. I made some other announcements at the beginning, but I want to end on this scripture. Paul uh, talking to Timothy, and I believe it's such a powerful, powerful set of verses in 2 Timothy. We know theologically between the book of 1 Timothy and the book of 2 Timothy, Timothy's ministry had fallen into some great challenges. So Paul is writing to a young emerging apostle in 2 Timothy in a time of crisis, in a time of frustration, in a time of challenge. Now, let's look at this. He says, in verse 1 of 2 Timothy, I, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, according to the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my dearly beloved son, grace, mercy, peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve from my forefathers with a pure conscience, without ceasing. I have remembrance of you in my prayers night and day, greatly desiring to see you, being mindful of your tears. So he's letting Timothy know, look, I know you're going through crisis. I know you're going through trial. I know there's issues going on in your ministry. I want to see you. I'm aware of your tears. I'm praying for you. I'm moved with compassion for you. He says that I might be filled with joy. He's saying if I could see him. And then he says, when I call to remembrance, this is critical. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in you, which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and I'm persuaded is in you also. He's pointing Timothy back to every word God gave him. He's pointing Timothy back to the fact your mother stood. Your grandmother stood. Why is that? He's pointing him because in a time of attack, in a time of crisis, we have a tendency to forget everything God previously said because now we're frustrated. Now we're concerned. But Paul is saying to Timothy, look, God did not change his mind. Your mother had faith. Your grandmother had faith. And they left a legacy or deposit. Remember, Timothy, in this time of adversity, everything God had said. And then he says in verse 6, where Wherefore, whenever you see wherefore, find out what it's, what it, why it's there. And it's connecting the thought to the previous verse because of the faith that's in you, because of what God has done in you. Wherefore, I put you, not somebody else, not your intercessors, not your friends, but I put you, Timothy, listen to what I'm about to say, in remembrance that you stir up the gift that is in you by the putting on of my hands. He said, Timothy, there are times in moving in the call of God in your life, in the sent assignment because apostolic is sent. There's times as an ox that you have nobody to pray for you. That everybody's quit. Everybody's given up. Nobody understands what you're going through. And you yourself have got to reach down on the inside and stir the gift of God up. Everybody needs to understand. There are times as a successful spirit believer, you've got to stir yourself up. Your friends can't do it. The evangelists can't do it. There are times you're facing hell and you've got to stir yourself up. You've got to know how to pray. You've got to know how to praise. You've got to know how to worship. You've got to know how to go through your journal and say, God said on May 1st, this prophetic word. God said in 1997, this prophetic word. And I'm making war with it today. I'm not giving up. I'm not quitting. Even when you feel like quitting, you speak the opposite and you stir yourself up. And when you've done all that, you pray loud and bold in the Holy Ghost. Why? Why loud? It doesn't matter the volume. Because when you're discouraged, your ears need to hear. You need to train yourself. When you get discouraged. It never matters how loud you pray in tongues to extract revelation because anytime you yield your lips to heavenly language, revelation is the result. But volume can shock your flesh and sometimes your flesh needs to be made aware. You are not ruling me. You're not dominating me. I am moving in the spirit in this season. Not because I feel like it. Not because it's easy. Not because it's comfortable but because I have decided and if you're going to be an ox in this hour you must decide you must decide no matter what hell says you must decide no matter what is going on in the land you must decide no matter what financial challenges what challenges of your faith of your mind of your body that you are going to unashamedly and boldly stand upon the word of God and you're going to war people say well what if I war this is always a question in healing what if I war <coughs> what if I pray 
and the person doesn't get the miracle. I would rather die believing God for something than die having believed for nothing. Hebrews 11 writes about people who died and didn't see the result of their faith on planet Earth. That's a challenging thought. But they died with faith in their heart. Last verse, verse 7. God has not given unto us the spirit of fear. Fear is not just a mindset or a thought. It's a spirit. But he's given to us the spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Sometimes your spirit has to override your mind. And I believe this is one of these times we need the apostolic ox anointing in our lives. We need an impartation of strength, of stamina, that business that God told you to start, that you're not going to give up. Maybe you got to modify it. Maybe you got to change it. I think one of the things about apostolic and prophetic people is they know how to shift when the climate is shifting. And they know how to stand against, and this is very important, they know how to stand against a culture. They know how to stand against pressure because you're never going to build anything great for God or in the natural realm without opposing pressure. The easiest thing in the world to do is jump in the stream of popular opinion and mindset and flow down the river. If you're an entrepreneur, everybody in the world says, go to college, get a job and get health benefits and you're happy. But if you're an entrepreneur, you're swimming up that stream. If you are an originator as an apostolic leader, Everybody in the world says, you know, just go. I, I have young guys say to me all the time, well, I want to join this network or I want to join this group or I want to join this denomination so I could get a building. Now, listen, God has got good networks people can join. Some are called to go into a denomination and be a voice of change within that denomination. So I'm not preaching against those various concepts, but I tell young emerging leaders and apostolic leaders, I say, if you would go and join something to get a building, and God's approved wife and not the voice of God. And as he obeyed the voice of his wife and not the obey, uh, voice of God, it wasn't necessarily a bad thing. He was still preaching. He was still praying. He was still doing things, but he wasn't in the perfect will of God for his life. And as he obeyed the voice of his wife, he was preaching one day and began to, because God had healed him from a terminal disease that included his heart began to have the symptoms of a heart attack and fell over while preaching. And this was a great man of faith. Immediately, his wife, Aretha, knew it was because of the disobedience she had forced him into through pressure. And his wife ran to the front and began to cry out to the Lord and say, I repent, O God, I give Ken back to you, Lord. Uh, he can travel and do whatever you said. And immediately God healed him. People don't realize, but going where God told you not to go, even if you're preaching, Trying to occupy an office God didn't call you into, even if you're preaching. Trying to be uh, joining something to get a salary or a network or an opportunity and heaven did not bid you to come there. Even if you're preaching, it can be detrimental to your mind, your physical body and your family. Many people are in warfare because they sold their gift for an opportunity. That is not what you want to do in this hour. So I want to pray for you today. And please share this broadcast. I'm sorry. I have no idea why it's freezing. I'm, I have full signal. I'm operating on that. This is just a demonic attack, but we've persevered. And hopefully if you're watching the replay, it didn't cause any problem for you. Thank you for sharing. Remember today, if you're watching this live at 10 a.m., I'm going to be on with Tr Apostle Teresa Hawkins on my Instagram. I'm starting a new show over there called Coffee and Profits. We're going to do this. This is my, I'm calling it my quarantine show. While I have so much time in the house, uh, I'm going to be interviewing some different, not only prophets, but leaders who are prophetic by nature. So join that conversation today. And let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for endurance, for tenacity. I really felt today, Lord, you wanted to stir your people. And Lord, I pray, I just saw in the spirit as I'm closing this broadcast, I saw an arrow hitting the bullseye and God said, I, I, some of you, I'm using this season to retarget you and refocus you because there's been so much distraction in your life and in your call. And God said, you're going to hit the arrow. Father, I pray for accurate prophetic leaders. I pray for dedicated apostolic pioneers. I pray for intercessors that will not waver and will not quit. I pray, Father God, for teachers that keep teaching uh, what you put in their heart. Even if people are saying, well, you need to be more revelatory 
this, this, but you've called them to teach basic principles and concepts of the body of Christ. I pray that for faithfulness to their word and their message. I hear the Lord say, teachers, remain faithful to that which I've commissioned you to teach. Lord, I pray for pastors who are facing a really unprecedented challenge and maybe trying to figure out how do I proceed in this time period? How do I build my church in this time period? How do I navigate this? I pray, pray for solutions, innovation, and strategies for them. And I thank you for them, Lord. I thank you, Lord. We stir ourselves up today and we thank you that what you've initiated, you will bring it to completion. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. God bless you, everybody. Thank you for joining me. Sorry about all the technical glitches, but I'm glad you endured. Have a great day, and I'll see many of you, I hope, on